So how did your interest in art develop? Really sort of circumstantially, I met Lowry Stokes Sims, who at the time was a curator at the Metropolitan Museum. And she said to me, you know, you're gonna come to New York, you're gonna do your thing in the financial services industry, but don't forget to collect art. So at that point in time, uh, when I felt able to do that, I started buying art mostly because I had empty walls to fill. And then I got to know the artists and their stories. And this has informed, really created the structure of our collecting approach and strategy ever since. Glenn's work to me is so marvelous. Glenn's such a brilliant artist with respect to his use of text, but he's also a wonderful and brilliant writer. That intellectualism permeates all of his work. Without knowing that, it's still just a beautiful object. Albers was a mentor to many of the artists whom we collect. I see Albers as a great teacher of future generations. I'm just intrigued by Bearden as a figure in art history. And this particular piece is compelling because of the reference to jazz. Many African-American artists of Romy's generation were overlooked for a whole host of reasons. But jazz musicians, who arguably were working in abstraction at the same time, African-Americans, got great legitimacy in a medium that was not identifiably black. And so that presents sort of a conundrum intellectually to me, and I don't know the answer to that, but it's an interesting question. Art is the thing that binds us, that reminds us of our humanity, that underscores what we have in common. Um, and so just for its life-enhancing qualities, don't forget to collect art.